going to stay in that. Let's begin to look at the economic activities that happened in Niger in the year 2022. I've been joined by Dr. Saze Iyo, an economist. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. And it's always nice to have you here. Same year. And yeah. it was good to have you join us for the last show of the year, 2022. Yeah. Yeah. You've been uh, on the show most times this year, and so wrapping up the year with us. Yeah, 2022 was um, a year where we discussed the economy a lot. Mm -hmm. So we hope that um, by 2023, all that we have been talking about, those in authorities will listen to us. Okay. And it's an election year. So they've usually said that um, when you get your politics right, usually you get the economy right. Okay. Because even if you have the best economy with a bad politics, you almost come to naught. So next year is um, election year. We hope... Um, we get the right leaders in place, then almost everything, because once the economy is fixed, the people will be happy and everything okay. will be fixed too. Mm. Yeah. All right, before we um, go into hopes segment, what yes. I like to call it, exactly. uh, hopes that uh, 2023 will bring in um, all the solutions that were proffered to the challenges that uh, Nigeria's economy was hit with this year. Uh, let's yeah. have a review of um, the activities first. Yeah. When the year opened, the aviation sector was in crisis. Yeah. Um, Several airlines weren't flying. Yeah. Scarcity of the jet A one fuel was yeah. so so much, and um, even For the rising cost. Yes, rising cost of um, airfares. Yeah. We saw that happen. Yeah. Let's look at that. Yeah, it it was it was a turbulent year for the airline industry. Probably, I think the closest has been during the COVID twenty twenty COVID year twenty twenty. I think that was the closest they came to having a bad year compared to twenty twenty two. In fact, there were about as at the last count, about three or four strike um, warnings or strike notices that were given by the airline industry in this year alone that had to be resolved with interventions from especially the Senate and so on. So I initially, the first I am March April was because of the jet A1 fuel. It went, in fact, it was almost a 300% increase. Just the same time diesel went up. So diesel was selling, was selling for about 200 naira per liter. Now it's going for about 800. So it was just around the same time that Jet A1 increased. And that was because of the deregulation. You know, the subsidy does not cover the other petroleum products other than PMS. So fuel price, um, Jet A1 prices went up. And it was difficult for these um, airline, uh, airliners to meet up. And moreover, it was a combination of um, increase in the prices and scarcity. It wasn't available. So the airliners asked that they should be allowed to import. But NNPC said they are the sole importers and they were not still ready to provide it. So that took about two months before it was resolved. Then I think around July, August, there was another incidence of a strike one, but this was about Forex. Yeah, July, August, September, when their monies, they said their monies were held up because they had, when normally when they collect fares in Naira, it has to be changed to dollar because all their parent companies are abroad. They have to send it outside, and they couldn't okay, assess months. forex. Yeah, they couldn't assess forex at the official rate with CBM because there was a, an agreement that within a week they would get the official rate of forex and repatriate. But they were not able to get it, and that caused another issue. In fact, two international airlines had to stop. Um, um, Emirates and one other one had to stop operations until CBN had to intervene, because you can't expect them to go to the parallel market to buy at 700. Exchange. Exactly. So we run at loss. At, at loss. So, and, and added to that, they were also having problems with maintenance, because we said it severally that almost all their maintenance is done abroad. Their C checks, their A checks, A to D checks are done abroad, and they need Forex since it's done abroad. In fact, the, uh, or the, the random um, C checks that is done every 18 months it's said to cost about 500 million naira every 18 months, and they have to convert to dollars. So this was all the issues. In fact, as small as whatever the smallest parts of an airline has to be imported. So all these were issues that they, they had to grapple with. And it was, of course, transferred to, um, to, to tickets, uh, 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 um, air fees that you have to pay. Benin to Lagos, a relation of mine flew to Benin to Lagos at the beginning of the year. It was going for about 25, 30,000. Just last week, my own sister came by and she paid 160000 just for Lagos to be in. You know, this is something that you would have used four or five ways. So it has ultimately fallen back on them, the consumers. And because of the problem on the road, 
people are now torn between do you pay the high fare or do you take, take the risk, risk of going on the road? The train is not even more unsafe, you know. So we had the um, Kaduna attack just um, last two, mo um, two, two or three weeks ago. This was not an attack. It was the um, accident with a car crossing the railway. That same Kaduna um, Abuja, a car crossing the railway, which that woman lost her life, a staff of um, NTA. So it has been turbulent throughout this period. So the airlines have been faced with having to meet with the increased demands. And few have, two, two recently had to um, shut down when there were issues with um, uh, NACA, talking about the fact that they, had, they weren't meeting um, their maintenance and so on. So two airliners uh, had to shut down, that was last month. So it has been turbulent for them, just like many other sectors. Yeah. Okay, even here, I also saw a name sim linkage. Mm -hmm. I went through with um, that began actually in 2021, yeah. and then deadline was given extended. Yeah. Uh, but eventually, we saw that uh, people's lines were uh, blocked. Uh, they couldn't make calls, and the implication of, of the main same linkage of businesses this year. Yes, yes, it was that. That was another turbulent period too, because you had turbulent in the sense that you had people having to scramble to go and get their registration done. People had to lock their shops because of the deadline. People had to. People even officially, or should I say unofficially, we had cameras catch people having to pay bribes to get their NIN and so on. So it, was, it, it, took, um, it took a lot from Nigerians. And then um, finally, after so many deadlines, their lines were blocked. And we talked about the fact that it probably affected those who were doing, um, yes, the online aspect was still going. But we have, just like how we talked about the fact that the Nigerian economy is, is mainly, mainly draws with cash. It's almost the same thing with our businesses. Most people, they call, you call a supplier, bring your tra um, tra truck from Apapa to this place. Most communications are done with um, phone calls. So it affected businesses. The, the, cuts, the, the, the deadline where they had to um, cut services, then the whole period of trying to register, because you didn't have many registration centers, unlike your um, PVC trying to register with. And like, they were just very, I think in a state, just probably the NIMC head office then, I think later on communication network. So, so it was the demand versus the um, people who are ready to register you wasn't commiserate. So it took a lot of uh, man hours and then, um, but, but the whole sad reality is that we were told that it would help to curb all the kidnapping, all the anti-terror, because when you register, by the time somebody now uses it to call a kidnap relation that you're something, something, bring, um, come and settle loss with, um, with um, ransom. The essence of this um, registration were told or that it was to curtail all that, but um, evidence does not show that that has stopped so far. So uh, at the end of the day, it's just standard practice. I know most countries are supposed to have registration done, but it took man hours just because we did not create enough centers. But um, let's hope that um, it, it, it all has to do with regulation. It has to do with, because if, if somebody reports somebody that so and so number called me, I'm not the one who is going to prosecute. You have authorities, you have the EFCC, you have, so when we report to those people, show them their number, we should see action, tracking these people with their I, I, INMC number and so on to ensure that uh, the whole effort that we put in place should not um, go down the drain. What yeah. about the business opportunities that the name same linkage uh, opened for other persons? Because when the name say could not meet the demand, mm. we saw that different agents came up later to on. render the services. Yeah, it came up later on. Even till now, you still have some small, small outlets. Just that I think generally now, the um, rates of registration, the rush has even reduced now. You see most centers, there's no, but in the heat, of the moment, I think beginning of the year, late last year, because it was to be December last year, it was increased to March this year, then later April. In the heat of the moment, when the rush was much, we didn't have these outlets. So later on, by the time these outlets came, I think the demand had been um, reduced. I don't know how much those people charge, so I, I, I think whatever it charges, if they charge, even if it's 100 naira, it should have provided employment for, for some people, but um, commensurate to what the, the, the amount of money you need to survive. The national poverty line currently now in Nigeria is about 347,000 naira. When you divide it by 12, it's 11,452,000 naira every month. That is the line below which 
the last MBS report said we have 133,000 people, 133 million people below the poverty line. That's a poverty line of 11,400. So if you have 133 million people living below 11,452,000 naira, so it shows you that even no matter what those people were charging, it still did not um, help the welfare situation of our citizens. Hmm. That's my Let's look at something related to um it's actually in the telecom sector. Yeah. We saw new entries uh, giving approval um, in the third quarter yeah. of this year. Yeah. Uh, so some lines were, some network were actually giving approval to commence operation in the country. Though uh, in Benin City here, we've not actually seen Same, the operation, yeah. but I'm guessing yeah. that in other parts of the country, Lagos in particular, would have seen some of this uh, happen. Yeah, yeah, we... we, we I, I know in Lagos and in Abuja, I've, even before these new approvals were given, you had some existing um, new entrants who were, who were oh, in fact, existing entrants who were doing business already. So the new um, licenses that were given, I don't know, it was given around the yeah, beginning of the third quarter of this year, but we've not seen movement. Even the very popular man, the Starlink, I've not yeah, still most. seen, yeah, 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 most. I've not still seen so much of what he has done. You know, you know, as we always say, the Nigerian business environment is, is, is harsh. So I don't know. It, 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 w there was a time, beginning of the year, too, we, the, the modular refineries, licenses were given to as many as um, 200,000 um, people, uh, 200 um, investors. Until now, we didn't see, I think just about five. We have one in Edo State, one in Delta. So sometimes it goes beyond just giving licenses. You now have, that's when the feasibility study will now start. So by the time they now come, and get experts to start drawing their feasibility studies. Sometimes they now come to see reality. In fact, the whole business registration can even take another six months, bottle next year and there. So let's hope that by next year we'll see some of these, few of them, some of them that will come, then those who are not able to come, uh, maybe they will just abandon their licenses. But in a dose, they want to see entrance, want to see competition. It's that competition that will bring um, a reduction in rates, better quality of services and so on. So we hope to see, especially in our state, we hope to see action by next year. Now, one thing we're also hoping to see action is yeah. uh, action on is the Trans-Sahara Gas Pipeline yeah. plan of the federal government. Yeah, we talked about it too during the year. It was supposed to be connecting. If at the essence of that, it would take advantage of this war in Russia and Ukraine. Yes, let's, it has been a project that has been existing for like 40 years, but we, we were made to believe that there was now going to be acceleration in the construction because you had um, countries like um, Italy, Netherlands now trying to go to countries like Morocco, diversify their so because they had late sanctions on Russia that they won't buy their gas. So they didn't want to seem hypo hypocritical that you've late sanctions, then you want to still go and get their gas. So they were trying to diversify to other markets. So that's when Nigeria tried to draw a, the, the, the gas plan. It, as we say, it has already been existing. But there was promises that action was going to be um, expedited so that would have the link go through Libya, Algeria, to you know, those northern um, African countries, they share border with Spain, the European nations. But I don't know, as at when I was still trying to follow up the news last month, there's still no, I, I don't know, they are probably carrying actions, but there's really little that we can see yet in, um, in, in, in their movements. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's look at um, subsidy uh, removal and reversal. Uh, we were expecting at the beginning of the year that subsidy will be removed, but we saw that uh, that decision was reversed by the government, and um, that resulted in the budget uh, becoming more than revised. What, yes, yeah. revised because yeah. uh, they had to be supplementary. Yeah, yeah. At the beginning of the year, January 2020, the budget. What was budgeted for subsidy was $433 billion, Naira, small, $432 billion, Naira. But by, I think by April, the Minister of Finance told us that they had sent in an, extra, um, um, an extra amount for, to, to now bring the um, total to $4.62 trillion, Naira, from $432 billion to $4.62 trillion. And in fact, by... October when she was breaking, briefing FEC, that was the Minister of Finance, she said it would go as high as 6.5 trillion. So from our initial budget of 432 billion, we are now running about 6.5 trillion. And what has changed? 
I bought fuel yesterday at 290 naira per liter. Some stations sell at 300. So you are asking yourself, if subsidy is still, they've not told us subsidy has. So in fact, it's not a matter of them to because it has been budgeted, 6.5 trillion. So what's the difference between the 180 and the 290? Who, where is this money? Where is this difference going into? So it, we've, said, we've said so many times that it's a drain. Many experts, many commentators have said that it should be removed. But I've always maintained right from time that if the subsidy, the sanctity of the subsidy regime is maintained, it's not as burdensome. We should know what's our consumption. DPRO tells you it's 38,000 um, 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 liters per day. NAPC tells you it's 62,000 liters per day. Um, uh, NURPC tells you it's 102 million um, uh, thousand liters per day. So you have varying figures. So you, you, can't, you can't, it's not something that you can, subsidy it should be something that we can independently, you can calculate from your house. So I know what's should go what, into what should go into it? Yeah, we know what consumption. exactly. We know what the international crude oil is prices. Even if we are not refining, we know what the refining cost of refining is. We know what cost landing cost is. So we should be able to just multiply it by our daily consumption. But it seems like when there are attempts to just perpetrate fraud, they just throw different figures at you so that you cannot come out with what. So I still insist. We've heard all the. I've been listening to all the presidential candidates, and they are saying that all three major ones, the major candidates have said they are going to remove subsidy. And I just fear for what it will be. We were just discussing on a WhatsApp group with somebody and they were saying, the person was crying that he just bought fuel at 265, that was just last week. And I was saying, you have been the one who have been shouting that they should remove subsidy. So it seems that most of us are just clamoring for this subsidy removal without knowing what the implication would be. Because when subsidy is removed, we'll be paying as much as 400, 500. Ghana is paying about 600 now per liter. So I think we as citizens, we should be asking our government to sanitize the subsidy regime instead of removing their hands. Because as much as I can imagine or remember, that's the only thing that Nigerians still get in form of palliatives by the government. So by the time you, just in October, when fuel now started selling above 180, we saw what inflation figures became from 12, 21.09 to 21.47. In fact, the whole inflation started from when diesel increased from um, 200 naira to about nine, 800 naira. That's when we saw inflation balloon from over 15% to about 20, then I started going into 20, 21% region because of diesel costs. Trucks having to carry um, foodstuffs from the north too. So, so subsidy regime, I think it's something that in some way that government should um, sanitize rather than remove. That's my personal opinion. But so far, as I said, from 432 billion, it rose to 6.5 trillion in our 2022 budget. Mm. Yeah. Now, uh, still in the oil sector, uh, the issue of oil thefts. Yeah. A very major yeah. issue disturbing the economy of yeah. Nigeria, more prevalent this year yeah. than ever. Yeah, it became, it became extraordinary. I think that's, that's the word to describe it. In, in, in 2022. We, we've heard from reports, from committee reports that are going on, we heard that it has never, I don't think it has been this kind of proportions. And, and I think it's just because the international price of crude oil increased from March. We started averaging $90, $100. So I think the greed of the thieves just also increased because they just thought if, if I was stealing um, one, uh, maybe 10,000 barrels a day, and now I can steal 100,000 pies for the times $100. So I think their greed just increased and, and everything just came to the fore. That's one. Then two, I think because the government became broke. So, you know, it's when you're broke that you now remember that you have to get some income. So that's when the whole income, reduce, reduce income from um, um, P, um, crude oil sales became very obvious because government um, debt servicing increased. Provision for debt servicing was 3.8 trillion in 2022 budget. But as at the end of quarter three, because quarter four results are now out, the minister said we were servicing our debt at 4.545 trillion from 3.8. So our debt increased, our debt servicing increased. So we now started scrambling for money. Then especially what made it become obvious is that NMPC stopped remitting to the federation accounts from even the CBN governor had to come that for like three months NNPC did not remit. So NNPC now started this crude swap, exchanging crude for refined oil. So at that point, that's when the whole source of revenue from NNPC, CBN now complained that funds were not coming in. It was giving 
billion dollars spending it on imports while export revenue was not coming. So that's when the magnitude of the oil theft came into. It's now the big elephant in the room. We are losing so much to oil theft and it's affecting our foreign uh, forex reserves, for, foreign exchange. Um, in, the, in, the, in the 2022 budget, our source of forex was budgeted at $79 for oil, forex. 79% of our forex was to come from oil, 10% was to come from gas, so that's 89%. The many 11% was to come from remittances, and we know remittances failed this year from $26 billion to $5 billion. So if 89% of your source of forex, oil and gas, now stopped remitting, so you can see that the country was stranded, so that's when all eyes came to the um, oil theft, and we know they made moves during the year. They gave a private consultancy firm to help recover um, to, to help recover those lines that had been tapped and so on. So we saw it in our last two months that it has increased, but at what cost? Because we are paying so much to this. But at whatever uh, what, whatever they, they say, half bread is better than none. So if we are paying to them and we are getting something back higher than what we used to get before, then um, let's see how it goes. But we are looking for a situation where it should be stopped completely. It's not something that we should be talking about. Oil Possible. is not... Mm. If, given the extent to which this um, crime has gone, yeah. is it possible that oil theft becomes a thing of the past totally? Yeah, I, 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 think when the, I think when the political will is there, there's really nothing that is possible. Because we've heard of complacency with, between they and the um, 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 military, who, the, the, the armed forces who are supposed to... You have, you have, you have marine police, you have... Um, um, water, water. Um, even in the military, you have the navy, you have the marine police, you have the navy, you have various armed forces that are supposed to man those. So I don't know. I don't know. Are they are they spirits? So it, it means that there's some connivance. Even the um, uh, customs um, DG said so that there's connivance. So these are even the Senate president also said so. So it means that if we have, they always said that it depends on the head. So when the head is is shows a political will takes two, three people as examples. So nobody will tell those things to stop. So I think it's just political. We've talked so much about theory, monetary policy, fiscal policy, but we don't talk about corruption most times. So I think when there is a strong will, bring people to book. In developed countries, in European countries, Western nations, there are people who also want to steal. In fact, they, have, they probably have the same appetite as us. But because there are laws, you know that if, it's, if you do it, it, something would happen. You will get a repercussion. It stops. So I think it's the political way. And that's why I've always said that leadership is the problem of Nigeria. So when we get a good leadership, and I think Nigerians have a good opportunity. This is not seven years to election. This is not five years to election. This is just three months to election. So I think this is the time when Nigerians should do a self-inquest, ask themselves, do we want to continue at this? Then you evaluate. You have about three candidates. Evaluate which you think would bring the best results. Okay, let's uh, go to the, the foreign scene. Uh, tech layoffs yeah. and uh, hiring freeze. Although it also affects uh, Nigerians, but in the global uh, community, we found that to be uh, something that happened strongly. Uh, that should be in the fourth quarter of this year. At the beginning yeah. of the fourth quarter, uh, we saw a lot of tech companies laying off um, tech experts and yeah. also putting the hiring freeze uh, that uh, tech experts were really not hired. And then we also had um, uh, some Nigerians and some Africans caught up in that um, issue. Yes, it, it, was, it also was a very uh, strong issue. You have those tech companies, most of them had to come under the, you know, the, both the COVID um, um, situation and also at the beginning of the year too, the general economy became very harsh this year. You had China, China bringing down lockdowns, even till yesterday now you have oil prices have slumped down to $81 from about $1,900. Why? Because, um, per barrel. Why? Because China has now started imposing some lockdowns. But they have been having problems too with um, COVID, the lockdown. So this has affected the general demand, the markets for everything, including the IT sector. You know? So most European markets are also struggling. It's a recession serious. So the tech um, industry has also had its own fair share too of those um, international and strangling. So it has led to a situation where we've had major tech companies having to cut down on cost and then um, laying up um, workers then. Probably the experts, you know, the experts will always remain relevant. So um, I think it was a way of now trying to pay the commensurate reflectively to the experts. But 
most tech companies have had struggling times and they've, they've, they've laid down, even in Nigeria too, you've had those situations. So, so it was a terrible, it was also part of the global, it hit the health sector, it hit um, the, the, the education sector, so uh, aviation sector too. So the tech sector just had its own, own fair share. But just because maybe Nigeria is not so much, we are not so tech savvy, our tech companies are still struggling. We just have small um, consultancy services provided to these um, um, telecommunication networks to just have some agreements with these tech companies. So we've not felt it that bad. Even it hit South Africa very, they lost about, the, 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 the statistic they gave was that they lost about 5% in South Africa of their tech um, um, employment um, status. So it has affected most developed. We are lucky that, I don't have to say we are lucky or unfortunate because we are not so tech-oriented um, in the economy. So it also just was a fair share of the tech um, industry getting from the global strangling there. Yeah. Okay, back to Nigeria. Mm. Move over now to the power sector. Yeah. Banks taking, uh, a bank takeover of the discos yeah. that happened this year as well. And it's still, uh, it's, it's still a situation right now. Yeah, it, it, it happened, especially in Edo State here. Yeah, we know we know the lady who was in charge and everything. So it, it, most of these companies ran bankrupt. So the banks took them, or Amcon and so on, took them over and handed them over. But the question, it has services improved. It's difficult to, I, I in my own area, it's difficult to make a sweeping statement. But in my own area, um, services has reduced. And it's just, it's just so much. I, I had to go to um, in, um, BDC, um, office around my area to complain and they said even they even in their office they're using generator that it's a transmission issue that transmission you know you know when the discos and the transmission came they give quota so they, you you buy units so that transmission has been giving them very low quota and quota and so you know we've had this big bag between um jenko's transmission and disco bulk passing this the jenko's complain that the transmission is not paying for what they supply to them. Transmission say they give the discos, the discos are owing them, they are not paying enough, and the discos are complaining that they're theft, they are losing so much to um, illegal, theft. yeah, alleged theft, to illegal connections and so on. So it's just a bulk passing move, and the discos themselves are not, so the, the, the consumers ask them, they will tell them because they are not giving them prepaid meters. So that's why they are doing the illegal communication. So I think it just has to be a, com a, a complete reform. The whole privatization last, okay, that was in the last administration, was faulted that it, it, it didn't give it to those experts, round pegs in round holes. They just gave it to their friends. Those were the acquisitions. So I think there has to be proper reorganization of the, um, the power sector. Make it a real private driven um, sector. Because what happened is that most of these people, they just inherited the NEPA assets, the transformers, the, or like those telecommunications, MTN, Glow, they didn't, inter they didn't inherit anything from NITA. NITA were all transmission wires all over, so they had to start all over. But these people, it seems, they inherited almost every asset of, of, of the defunct NEPA, transformer, everything, everything. Well, it, without, so it, it Shouldn't you have your own assets to help you provide the services for which customers pay? Exactly. So that's where, so that's where only the people who, who superintended over that um, privatization in the defunct admission, only them can really answer that question because you, you ask yourself, it, it now made these people look lazy. They just inherited assets and they were not ready to bring in new funds. That's the, been the problem. They've not been ready to invest. It's now seen like free money. Let's just collect estimated bills from, from consumers without, they are not bringing in, they were to bring prepaid meter. That was the agreement in 2014 that they were to supply prepaid meters free. That was the agreement to every consumer. But now consumers are even paying and they are not seeing, they are not getting it. There was a time they've set up many, many funds arrangements to ensure that. So it, it just, it's just a, a case of legal system. There have been accusations that the, the agreements were not properly sat down and arranged. The, the legal framework around the arrangement was not tight enough. So if it was, then we should have legal and uh, government taking these people to court. That we asked you to supply prepayment. We had to ask you to do this. We still are the ones who are buying our transformers. We still are the ones buying almost everything. You go to the, they tell you, so you have to now buy your transformer. When you buy the transfer, they tell you it's their property. So there's so much disorganization in the system. And 
I think, as we've already said, it's just a leader who would come and reform the sector and put a proper regulatory framework around the whole sector so that when, you miss, when one sector, DISCOs fail to give you um, um, PP meters, this is what I can do. When GENCOs fail to give transmission, this is what you can do, just like the PIA. So everything is well laid out. So when there is an infraction, you know what the consequence should be. So until we have that framework, I think we will just keep on complaining and um, having to dwell with this. We've changed names. Almost this is the third name that we've changed now, and we are still where we are. So um, we just hope that a, a, a proper framework will be set up, and it all still boils down to government will, political will. Mm. Yeah. Okay, well, government did have the will to redesign the Naira in 2022, yeah. that yeah. we've seen. Yeah, the, it, it happened that the, the redesigning of the, the Naira came, they complained that we, the, the, the worry was that there was so much money in the hands of individuals that was not in the um, banking sector, and they wanted to bring everything to the, informal, to the formal banking sector. And just like we said, as I said in the last program, um, that for me was not a worry because we had government who had, um, we had government who was owing um, the CBN through ways and means 24 trillion naira. In fact, the president was asking for another one trillion recently in the supplementary added to what we already have as ways and means. Then we have domestic debt, 21 billion. At the beginning of this year, domestic debt was 19 trillion. It is 26 trillion now, between 2021 and 2022. And that's because, you know, the euro bond market had issues during the year. They were supposed to go for four tranches. They were able to go for just two because the cost of borrowing now increased when Fed, US, um, raised yeah, interest, interest rates. So we now have to now resort to domestic borrowing, seriously. So from 19 to 26 trillion, that's about 7 trillion, had to be borrowed from the domestic sector. And that's why you see TB rates recently now, it's averaging about 13% now. So it's about 1, 2% at the beginning of the year. So government had to resort to um, um, borrowing. So government has 26 trillion domestic debt. The total debt, um, 26 domestic debt, 24 trillion ways and means, that gives you over 40 something trillion domestic. So, if CBN is pursuing the 2.73 that it says household, I just see it as a misplaced policy because the cost of printing, the point is even now, I still, and I'm not exaggerating, I've not seen any of that new Naira notes. This is the third week. I've not even seen it and with my eyes. And commenced 15th December. Exactly. So we are, we, are, we are two weeks plus now, and deadline is January 31st, and I've not seen it. I'm supposed to be having, no, so for me, I think it was a rush. London, um, um, UK. Recently, they announced that they would have new notes yes. to remove the Very Queen of the, England. The exactly. Of, uh, King Charles. Yes, to replace it with King. And they are saying that it will come into circulation mid 2024. 2024. Mid 20. That's how that's how organized systems work. In my own view, I don't know. But why you now just being within one month? It, it's it's too rash. So it, it's now like you're in in any case. If um, CBN is saying that is to help this, is to help. I, I see it like they are now going beyond their monetary, their goals. You look at this, the, the roles of the central bank, economic growth, price stability, exchange rate stability. Those are the, there are about four or five cardinal roles, goals of the CBN. So when we're now having them, we now start having them going into the other roles. You want to catch people by surprise because of election or something. So it now becomes like, we are now like in a dysfunctional economic system, dysfunctional where there is no, it's not like a case of, so far we get it done. Whoever does it no does not matter. No categorization of That's your it. job. Exactly. That's when something is dysfunctional. You now have your leg picking the things that your hand should be doing. It might be doing that, but it's dysfunctional. It's not what it's arranged to do. So that's what we are experiencing now. CBN going into different roles. And so, so the new currency, and for me, I, I, I just, I'm just hoping that it's not another policy somersault because they came with withdrawal limits of 20,000. I remember on the last program, I said that it was going to be unrealistic. It has now been increased to 100,000. It's been um, increased 500, to 500,000 For individuals, yeah. Then 5 million for corporate. So we're almost there. We're almost back to square one because how many people have the five? So we're almost there. Then the Senate has now called on the CBN to increase the deadline for this print, this new notes mm. to June 31st. They said so on Wednesday. So we might have the CBN um, having to Extend succumb, succumb to that then. At the end of the day, we are back to square one. So all the monies, so much that was spent, budgeted to print these new currencies, whatever the rule, the, the intention was, 
would now just somersault on his head and we'll just be back to it. So I, I think we have, we have problems with policy management, policy synchronization. Because at, that, at the time, if you remember, the Minister of Finance, who is, in, in fact, in the Finance Act, is, CBN is supposed to, not necessarily supervisory, but it's an appendage of the Ministry of Finance. The Ministry of Finance said she didn't know anything about it. That's what she said on national television. So then the CBN governor said he had talked to the... So by the time you have framework where you don't have, you should have the Minister of Finance, the CBN, you should have so many bodies coming together to draw a policy as sensitive as that. So Maybe the EFCC inclusive. Even inclusive, yeah, this EFCC, DSS and so on, because they are all regulatory bodies. They should come together to draw. These are policy issues. We talked about UK, two years time that there. So I think it's just a case of a dysfunctional system. I think the country, if I'm to de de um, describe the economy in this year, particularly running for more, I, I think it's crumbling. We're having so many, so many bad news compared to good news. So um, the, 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 the withdrawal limits, the reprinting, I see that it will be, the deadline will be increased again because currently we have the DSS and the CBN debacle. They, they tell you that the CBN governor has, is, is not around and so on. So, there, there seems to be less, so I, I think there will, be, there, will, there will be an extension and then we'll be back to square one of policy somersaults again. Mm. But I think it was anti-people for me. The printing, especially without short time, then the withdrawal limits, it did not, one, it was not a priority. This is a government that is five months running out. CBN should have been expending energy to collecting its 23 million trillion back that the government is owing Give us our money back so and let's put it back. So going to the next administration? The next administration. They should have been looking for putting pressure on the government to give, bring these Nigerian people's money. It was printed for them. Give us our four trillion back. Let's put it in the economy. Domestic debt paid back and let's put, imagine putting that in the economy. You can imagine inflation will crash. There will be so much, there will be money in circulation. Because what is happening now, because there's not an increase in domestic borrowing, what happens now is that even the commercial banks will find it more um, comfortable to go into government security. So you now have increased cost of funds. If you are giving a commercial bank an option, should we give the businessman this money or do we put it in government security and earn 13 percent cool money that will definitely come? So it has started taking money from the money markets, from the equity. So those companies who are in the equity market who are supposed to sell shares and get it to invest in their business people will now prefer to go for the government securities. And that's because domestic borrowing, government is increasing domestic borrowing, it's increasing tre um, treasury bills, so that it will encourage people to bring money. We are also packing money into the government, uh, into the government sector, strangling the private, the private sector. sector. So, so it's, it's, um, it, it's a situation that um, the reprinting and the withdrawal limits, I see, as I said, that it will be extended and we'll just be back to square one again. Mm. Okay. All right, on the final note, inflation. Yeah. This year, yeah. though we've not gotten a report for uh, inflation for, for the fourth quarter, fourth quarter yeah. but uh, months and months inflation has we've seen it uh, increase. What do you think will be going into January with? I think inflation has been the big elephant in the room. I inflation, inflation is the, for me is the biggest problem of the Nigerian economy because in 2022, if we had to do a comparison of the 2022 budget, everything that it was meant to achieve, and now. It is difficult to see how we can say this budget succeeded. The, the, the projection for inflation rate for 2022 was 13%. That was, that was what was budgeted. And we are on 21.47% now. Almost double. Yes, yes, it's, it's, it's almost 100%. 26% will make it um, double. We are on 21.47. So, Who knows so, what December will be? Yeah, that was, that was just for November. December figures are not out. So we have, this was a year when we sold the benchmark for oil was $57. I think it was later increased to $62 per barrel. Oil averaged about $900 per barrel. So it means that we should have a positive, a surplus. $100 minus 62 should give you about $38. So what happened? So it means that that should have been put in our excess crude account. But excess crude account currently, as of November last year, the minister says $472,000. Thousand mm. dollars ECE. This was ECE that was four, four, four billion dollars in 2014. If I under year I do at 2008, it went to as high as 22 billion dollars, and now it's 472. Even when we sold oil above the benchmark, so all these have been things that have 
that have driven inflation. We've had structural inflations. Definitely, you know, in March, the CBN trying to rain down on inflation started increasing MPRO. In March, it was, March, April, it was 11.5%. It has been increased subsequently in all their different monetary policy meetings. Yes. And it's last month, it was increased to 16.5%. So you ask yourself, it has been increased from 115 to 165 with the aim of bringing down inflation. Meanwhile, inflation Keeps has been rising. running away. Yeah, it has been running away from 15% is 21.47 now. So it shows that that policy is not working. And that's why we've always said that it's demand pull. Demand pull inflation, that policy will only work when it's demand pull. But we had issues, it's cost push. It's structural, structural customs, structural um, um, your bad roads, structural diesel, cost of diesel increased. Cost push, things like Forex. Um, um, investors couldn't get access to Forex. Forex is 700, around now, 700 um, naira to a dollar. So it means that any investor who gets that would have to get his money back. We have had issues with import, because we're an import dependent economy. Anything that happens in the global economy, we are just like on the railway, on the rail track. Of, we, are, we are like, if this is a global economy, we are just sitting down because we are an import dependent. So whatever happens along the track, Affects, or affects you because, economy. yeah, because you are exposed. You are importing almost everything. So Russia-Ukraine war happened and it hit us because we are importing almost everything. We saw our import and our export figures. So it means that those are issues that have driven imported inflation, structural issues, cost push issues, forex, and so on. So increasing interest, NPR from 11.5 to whatever it is. Since it's not demand pool, too much money pushing few good. We will just keep strangling the economy because economic growth has also been falling. In the first quarter, it was 3.11% economic growth. This third quarter, NBS, we also that is 2.52. So we are declining. When South Africa, South, when you look at the South African economy, end of third quarter, they increased by 1.6%. You look at the South African economy, and I've said this so much, until we now become production, a production economy, not just production. I've heard most of the presidential candidates say agriculture, agriculture. And sometimes it's nauseating because you cannot be going back to what you were doing in the 60s. Agriculture was driver of the economy in the 60s. What's from secondary production? The, most of us. something else to so agriculture, not making it. Yeah, not necessarily. Yeah. It's not okay. necessarily that agriculture is bad. Yeah, but it should not be the focus. It's, okay. Countries have, have done well with agriculture, Netherlands and so on, but we should be moving towards probably 60% manufacturing, 20% agriculture. That's what the drive should be. Most of us don't know. It can be fact checked that. South Africa produces cars. Toyota, BMW, Vokes, Nissan, Isuzu, to, um, South Africa. In fact, it, was, it has been mentioned that they are the 18th largest producers, automobile producers in the world, South Africa. About 257,000 units of Toyota were produced by South Africa at, last year and almost, avidly, almost every year. So they are, they are an automobile, they are, they are secondary, and you look at their inflation rates, it's 7.4%. Single South digits. Africa, 7.4 percent. So it's not it's not magic. They are rand to a dollar is 16 rand to a dollar. Why? Because production, secondary production. So until that takes place, we will just be going around with respect with, with to inflation. Our security also has to be. That's what is driving food inflation. Security in the north, insecurity in the north. Then the flooding that happened recently too, it affected. So it's been all structural issues. So even if monetary policy keeps increasing it will become inefficacious in curbing inflation. It all falls down to political will, as we've always said. It's been the political will. Okay, yeah. and the good news is next year is uh, an election, a year where political decisions will be made because exactly. it's an election year. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Sazeo, for coming yeah. uh, on the show today and yeah. helping us do a review of uh, and address economy in the year 2022. Yeah. Happy New Year to you in advance. In advance, Happy New Year to you. We hope 2023 We'll do less talk, and most of our talk will be we are praising and praising the Nigerian economy, saying that growth is now five percent, inflation is now five five percent, single at ways digits the can improve. Exactly, and we are saying ways and means are falling from twenty four trillion to even zero. So that is it, EC and so on. So we just hope that the Nigerian economy will be better. All right, we we'll hope so too. Uh, this is my wish for Nigeria that it gets better in 2023. I know you wish that as well. I'm blessing the HR. Wish you a happy new year in advance.